But is he doing streaming? Actual Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. The point here is that test, test, test. Yeah, the point here is that I want this to get archived. I don't actually care if anybody's here to see it live. <clears throat> but um, he probably shouldn't have his site say 5 p.m. Not that it matters. I was going to do this when I did it, so. Okay. All right, uh, I'll be back in about a minute. Alright, so <clears throat> what are we doing? So yesterday I worked on setting up threading for the procedural generation and mesh building, but I didn't finish it because I got tired. <clears throat> and I'm actually sleepy now because I'm kind of continuing where I left off time-wise, but uh, while I've still got it all in my head, I really wanted to work on it. So we're overlapping the Handmade Hero stream, and that's okay. <clears throat> I 
also need to eat dinner. Or a fake dinner. As best I can while I'm streaming. So. Uh, where do we, where did I leave off? Where are we continuing? Where I left off was I created a couple data structures. I created a set of worker threads and a manager, work manager thread. Uh, worker threads get two kinds of jobs, either building a procedural gen of some chunk data, which in future versions would alternatively be loading from disk um, and decompressing. And then they also have a job which is to build a mesh from some of those chunks. And then the manager thread is responsible for setting up those jobs, marshalling the data from one job to the next as needed. And I'm not psyched about having to have an extra thread doing that work. It's not really a whole threads work. So probably I need to make the individual worker threads do it instead, but I just wanted to do it that way to start with while I was figuring it out. What is not happening yet is that the renderer needs to actually request what meshes it wants. And then once they've been built in memory, the renderer needs to take them back and upload them to OpenGL. So, that is what I should be working on, although I have a few fixes I want to make to the existing code first. So, uh, with that being said, let us, what, how will we do this? I am going to describe what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it and eat at the same time. I think best plan. So, First thing I want to do is I have this thread safe queue and it's not a real data structure because the data that it's actually manipulating is not included in the queue. And so each of the different things that I can put in the queue have their own functions to add and remove things from the queue. And so there's a bunch of duplication there and a bunch of bugs, and I'm going to deduplicate that. And uh, it's a little silly to refactor code that you haven't even run yet. It's impossible for me to run tests to verify that my changes have worked because I haven't ever even tried to get the original code working. But since I'm going to reduce the amount of code, I'll probably end up with fewer bugs than if I didn't reduce it. So I'm okay with doing that work without ever having tested it. So that is what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to talk about it very much while I do it, because I'm going to also eat.
In addition to among this code, there are two things I wanted to fix or investigate fixing. That function that I spent so much time trying to figure out how to implement monitor with condition variables. Uh, and To prioritize mesh building over proc gen. Because as the code stands right now, all the meshes that are requested will try and generate all the terrain chunks for all of them and won't and since it's a queue it won't ever actually add the meshes building to the queues until the terrain chunks get generated all of them in parallel whereas what we want is once the first so terrain chunks have finished generating to immediately generate the mesh that's what that one is all right so So, add to queue, get from queue, both seem reasonable. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to them. I just cut and, or search and replaced the things that needed search and replacing mostly. Now add gen. Add to Q. Uh, gen. Called. Get these. Yep. We don't need that anymore. Nope. Oh, mesh. Q. Built. What's it called? Built. Meshes. Okay, so that's it for the data structure rewrite. Now I don't have to actually use this new stuff. So this is size of finished mesh, built mesh.
Quest queue or bolt queue? Bolt queue. Let's see size of bolt queue of zero. Size of chest queue of zero. Why is that an unresolved symbol? Because I copied that into this file, I, I cut and pasted that into this file and didn't actually repaste it back here. Now that I've done that cleanup, I want to do those two bullet points and then do the render side. Um, Okay. Uh, sure. So we never used the wake up function. So what was the wake up function called? <clears throat> wait or wait, wait or wake. All right. So this one should call wait or wait somewhere. Wait. Or wait. <coughs> and then when a job finishes. Hard. 
Prioritize mesh building over proc gen. That, it's hard. I don't know how to do this. One thing is I want to stop proc gen many. <coughs> Do this with the thread variable, but whatever. I mean, not thread, but with the have both sides. Here. Stacking proc gen equals zero. Every time we end one, we extract. Um, I can try to enqueue the work and the thread will, uh, the thread will, the thread safe queue will refuse to add it if it's full, but I want to stop it before then. So it doesn't even try to create it. Or if. Gen is greater than equal max proc gen continue. <clears throat> Divine max proc gen. At least 16 not to do a thing. We only have a number of threads. Let's say 16. That'll be right. Um, so I'm going to have to re-answer some of those questions since they didn't make it into, since they were in the stream that was lost, I need to get my official answers on record so that we have more than just the fact for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, okay. So that. Okay, so now we still have the problem that we don't bump the meshes to the top of the list. So how can we do that? We have two separate thread safe queues, one with the jobs for that and one with the jobs for the other. But then you need to wait on both queues, and that's a painful, messy thing, except in week. And I'm using SDL on that week. Um, yeah, I need to start ASMRing more with my speech problem. So that you can find it even more soothing. So yeah. Now let's uh so anyway, um what uh so I can't I can't use two cues. So how can I do this? How do people do this in the real world? I don't know. I'm not an expert at thread programming. Um Can I reorder the jobs that are in the queue? I can. I can lock the queue and reorder the jobs that are in there, but that seems pretty dumb. Um, thread work queue priority. No, but I don't want thread priorities. I want job priorities, task priorities. <coughs> Multiple work queues. Oh, 
Well, maybe this is enough because we do guarantee that. Well, no, because you can't issue that first job until that one those finish. <coughs> All sixteen have to finish, and after the first fifteen have finished, we'll have pushed in another fifteen things of work. So it'll be a while before we get to that one. Actually, though, this is redundant. If I do some kind of thing that prioritizes the other things, then I don't actually need to have a hard limit on how many things I can put in that. Um, I don't know. There must be some different term that people use to uh, prioritizing different. Uh, what would it be? Oh. The other, um, I mean, I guess the manager could. <coughs> be more conscientious about scheduling the work, and not give them work to do. Only give them work to do in the order it wants them done. Instead of trying to prioritize after the fact. We're going to run into the exact same thing. Well, a different flavor of it with the renderer, because the renderer is going to be assigning meshes it wants loaded with priorities, but then as you move around, Priorities will change depending on the position for the stuff that has been. In the steady state where everything's getting built outside of your view, none of that will matter. And then the uh, opening state when you're first loading stuff around you, it doesn't really matter that you don't get it perfect. So you could punt all that. <coughs> but that only works if you reach a steady state where it is happening outside of your view. And I do want this engine to be usable for other scenarios as well. All right, so <coughs> can I restrict the order I push things in? Not really. Because like I said, I, I need 16 chunks to make the first mesh. I have to enqueue those 16. Can't enqueue the mesh build because it depends on those other things finishing, which is why these things normally all use people use these job managers that depend on the completion of <clears throat> um Maybe I could do a thing where once the chunk gets built, it checks if it, there's any meshes that that makes it the last mesh, that makes it the last chunk for that mesh, and that worker thread goes ahead and immediately builds it. That way it would absolutely get done as soon as possible. Problem is, checking that is a pain. Have that living in the integer thread. Um, the manager thread that I have up right here. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to do this. Uh. tasks
Okay, well, I guess one approach would be to have two queues, and when it wakes up, it checks both queues. I guess I can try that, see how that does. So now, get ending task. So we have. Meshes and gen. <clears throat> we wait in the semaphore, then that guarantees that there's definitely one or the other has something. And then we say, get, get from Q. Meshes. This is fine. That's a little extra work. Oh yeah, Bobby. Um, <clears throat> so you can't generate a mesh until the 16 chunks required for it have been generated. Uh, you can't build a mesh until the, those have been generated. So there's tasks that generate the, the chunks and then uh, the dependency between those tasks is not explicit. I mean, I don't even have a task system, of course, but um, I need to fill out, before I can issue the mesh building task, I need to fill out a little data structure that has the 16 chunks it depends on. There's just another separate process sitting there that's once the other tasks complete, it gathers them up and fills out the little data structure. It reminds me of item three that I need still need to reference count the chunks so that it can do that safely. <clears throat> um, so, uh, I can't, a after I issue the task, the 16 chunk tasks, or however many, because some of them are in the cache, I can't immediately issue the mesh task because it re relies on that other thread to actually package it up. So it doesn't get to issue those requests until the mesh jobs, until it's finished, uh, until it sees all the chunks are finished. But at that point, it'll have already pushed a bunch of other chunks into the task queue, and I actually want it to prioritize doing the meshes before doing the task, the gens. Um, reverse the dependencies. I don't know what that means. So instead, at the moment, I'm just building two queues, and uh, when I build the meshes, I'll when I finish gathering the chunks that I need, I'll push them into the mesh queue and it'll check the mesh queue instead of the, which is I'm sure not ideal, but I think it will work. Gen task, so this adds to queue, getting meshes. Adds to queue, getting gen. <clears throat> Yeah.
yeah, the th <coughs> the thing you're talking about will allow me to get rid of the manager thread, but the manager thread uh, is doing some other work, um, dealing with the fact that the cache that the chunks are stored in, they might get ejected from that cache, and some other stuff. And I, so I think the thing you're saying can be made to work, but I just sim to simplify my life, I'm starting by having this manager thread that just keeps going, iterating over and processing things. <clears throat> um, oh, and of course, regarding what we were talking about, um, you often want semaphores that don't have a max count. So that thing you were saying that the initial count is the max count, I don't think is true because it's pretty common to have, I think, to have a semaphore that you start with zero and as you add, say, available items, you uh, increment the semaphore. And then when you are getting things from it, you decrement the semaphore. So the count wants to start at zero. Why did you choose polygons over raycasting and octree? Because that was what I was doing in 2011. And this is just an extension of that. And I did that in 2011 because I was starting from, well, I was starting from Ace of Spades, which actually was a raycaster, but uh, I guess because of Minecraft, but is why I did it. Um, so, uh, so now I need to add gen task, add a mesh task, and we have to build the queues. Adding meshes, gen. Called pending mesh, pending meshes. I call it pending meshes and pending gen. Okay. Then so it's a good thing that I made that into a real data structure so that I don't have to have a unique copy of the the add the Q and DQ functions for every single one. Uh, so. And we'll worry about the setting the numbers of these to useful values later. Okay, I think that's item two off my list. Yeah. Okay, and the reference count chunks. So, where do I get the chunks? Uh, so I get a chunk here. Here's where I add it to the list. So that's where I need to increment it. So GCC chunk, so it has to be a gen chunk. Gen chunk. And chunk. I guess I'll put it at the beginning. So where do we create gen chunks? Let's rename this to release gen chunk. Well, wait, this takes a GCC, not a Okay, so release and chunk. This instead of freeing GCC chunk release gen chunk of GCC chunk. I know what that to do was. Okay. So more gen chunks. Okay, here's where we generate one. <clears throat> well, let's just set it to zero and make all the callers 
keep track of it. A chunk in cash. So, for a moment. Okay, and then I think now the only people who access it are <coughs> these guys. So, generate chunk. Which puts it in the queue. So we better release and chunk. So we have to increment it while it's in the queue. Then the chunk in cache will increment it. And so then we can decrement it. Decrement the one that's in the queue. And then when we add it to one of these, you want to let the left count. Why is that not? Oh, what's that? Okay. And then at some point we free up all of those. It's going to be in the mesh task. Here, we're done with all of them. Here. So. the lazy way. Why is that not? Let me do reference. It's that. Okay, and then we do reference all the chunks. Oh no, we have to call that function release gen chunk. So we can actually free them. Uh, maybe that's it. So now we want to look for calls to free and make sure we didn't leave anything freeing the chunks directly. Oh, that's all the freeze in this file. That seems a little. Oh, on the low side, but all right. <coughs> yes, I have a lot of static arrays for the queues and stuff. So maybe that's the ref counting. I'm sure there's bugs there. So. Oh, what's, did I already delete the comment about that? I must have. All right. So I think that was all of the things on that list. So now all that's left is to do the renderer communication. Um, and the renderer communication is th these. So the renderer needs to pull back the things that have been built and upload them and it needs to request them. So, so first of all, let's go ahead and have it pull them. That's easier, right? Um, except that I want to have a failable. So this is called something like trilock mutex.
I like new decks. Didn't auto complete. Does any of this auto complete? Is this my NCB dying on me again? Uh oh, I'm gonna get a whole bunch now. Um. So. Just oh, SCL. Yeah, I'm getting, not getting. So, uh, try lock, non blocking. So, turns zero. Timeout. One on error. Okay, and now we want to say, um, build mesh right in the data. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right, I put these out here because I thought it was going to access them directly, but that's dumb. <clears throat> So, uh, I don't know what to call this. So we say if get from um, Q non blocking built Q VM I guess we just do that. <clears throat> um and then that goes here. Upload mesh. Now we're going to live in. Oh, we still have to do this. We still have to make separate ones of those for each thread. Uh, then this goes into voxel render because this is going to get uploaded by the renderer now. Have mesh chunk in it? Yep, it does. Okay. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, so now we just do let's say here. Wow. Whatever that was called. Get next built mesh, and I misspelled it build, I think. Mesh. Why am I getting no autocomplete? That usually means I have a syntax error above. Oh, mesh. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Function needed on the old path, probably. Um, should probably export that. So 
plural. Yeah. Okay. Built to. Oops. Build smash. I mentioned that was wrong. All right. What are the actual errors here? Build queue. It's supposed to be built meshes. Okay. So now am I going to get my autocomplete? No. Don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I don't know what that's doing. Helm dot vertex build buffer Helm dot base buffer. Okay, now here I'm just gonna build all of them every frame, which isn't necessarily right. Maybe I want to build some. Let's do it after we draw instead of before we draw. Hard to know what's really the right thing to do there. I want to do it like while the clear is running, maybe, which would actually be here. Um, or maybe we want to let stuff queue up as much as possible. <clears throat> okay. Now, I believe this should still run the old single thread path. Like it should create threads, but still just be doing everything with the old stuff. It's not until we actually start issuing requests that stuff will change. All right, so question is, do I want to preserve the single threaded behavior or not? I think not, I think I don't care about the old behavior. I'll comment it out for now and delete it and not delete it immediately in case I have issues. But I think the all right, so I think all of this logic goes away because we want to do it in a totally different way. Um. How long have I been doing this? Is about an hour now. Accidentally switched web pages and lost the chat. Um. Uh. Tab to make sure I don't. I can never figure out how do I get to my dashboard. The roundabout way. An hour ago. Okay. Starting to get tired. I said I was sleepy when I started. Um, so I'm wondering if making these changes here, if it's, I'm too at risk at this point. Tired. Um, okay, so what I need to do is I need to iterate over all of the places. 
um, that might be visible or are just out of range of visible. If there are no meshes, request them or put them in a list of requested meshes. Let me write down. Let me write this down, and maybe that's where I'll stop. It's I'll design the, what I'll characterize exactly what I need to. Wait, didn't I write this down? Yeah, I wrote this down. That somewhere comment in here somewhere. Here we go. Uh, yeah, it's not in any detail though. Okay, so I need to actually write the detailed version of that. Um. So, <clears throat> what do we do? Or slightly larger than view radius around player. If check if mesh check if mesh exists. Uh, let's just say yeah. If mesh check doesn't exist. Add to list of needed meshes. Prioritize needed meshes by one distance from player to in front of player. Um, and then Mesh doesn't exist, but is not already in process, in being processed. Yeah, well, let's just say that, because that's gonna change over time. So eventually we'll take a lock and then we can lock it down. Sort by prioritization. Then, um, lock the render queue, the render request queue, what is it called? Uh, renderer requested meshes. Requested meshes queue. Rebuild the queue from scratch based on current priority order, but omitting any entries that have already been dispatched. But another complexity, which is that. This guy has already started locking down their valid chunks. Where does it store that? In the RM, which is the what? In the requested mesh data structure, in the queue. So we need to correlate the what's already in the queue with the ones we've just done, which means these probably need to be stored in a totally different data structure that we can directly index into. So change renderer. So change worker manager to store pending chunk sets in a globally indexed data structure. So the renderer algorithm below can see into it. Also store in that same data structure if a mesh build task has already been enqueued. That already have corresponding tasks. 
and entries that were in the old queue but don't survive to the new queue need to have their sets cleaned up. Okay, I think that is correct algorithm. That very last step, I don't know what data structure I need for that. I need to figure that out. Uh, yeah, I'm not, they're already chunked up to sizes where I don't want to deal with aborts. Um, partly because um, the chunks get used by multiple mesh generation jobs, so um, it's probably going to be rare that it's worth uh, doing that. But And then the other thing is that um, if you generate a mesh um, and then the renderer decides it doesn't need it, uh, it can still just go into the cache um, and be there in case you happen to go back. So that would be happening if the chunk in question were very, at the view distance limit in some direction and you're moving in the other direction, say, um, because you changed directions. Uh, and so now that one gets generated, but it never gets used. And it's okay for that to just go into the cache because maybe you'll turn around again and start going the other way. So whatever. They are kind of big jobs in one sense, but uh, I mean, it totally depends on the data. The, um, the, they could be 30 millisecond jobs. They could be three millisecond jobs. It totally depends on what kind of thing you're doing, what kind of data set, what kind of voxel world you have. Um, all right, so how can I do this final cleanup stuff? That's pretty gross. I don't want to iterate over the entire map looking for ones that I missed. So it sounds like I need to keep the old queue around and iterate that and check them whether they made it into the new queue using that same global data structure to tag that. Um, which is just annoying because now I need two lists. So I need to like swap between the lists, I guess. Uh, and of course this whole thing. Okay, and then unlock the render. <clears throat> oh, look at that. I'm definitely, that's probably sleep. Um, what exactly is a chunk here? Well, a mesh chunk is 32 by 32 by 255. And no, sorry, 64 by 64 by 255. And a gen chunk is 32 by 32 by 255. Gen chunk being a chunk of voxels that are getting procedurally generated into a dense 3D array. And a mesh being a collection of base and vertex data. Um, so could you just swap the array? We've got the thing locked, so nobody else can be pointing into it. Is that true? I believe that's true. Make sure all the copying happened inside the lock. So yeah, I could probably actually just swap the arrays. Kind of gross. Um, packing stores in the really the right words are there the store on the queue. Um Or just have a way of which way. All right, I flipped that. Yes, but the thread safe queue has a pointer to the array. And yeah, by swapping the arrays, I mean swapping the pointers. 
the thread safe queue data structure has a single pointer. It's not indirected through an index, and I don't want to add that indirection for all the other things. So it's easier to just swap the pointers. Um, uh, guess that covers everything. Okay, I'm going to walk through this algorithm again and see if what I just wrote down makes sense. Iterate over the mesh chunks, slightly larger than view radius from player. All right. Mesh chunk doesn't exist. Add to list of needed meshes. Prioritize needed meshes. Object is player in front of player. Prioritize. Yeah, that sounds fair. Sort by prioritization. So we pay a queue sort in the renderer of if you go to a 2000 view distance uh, and our mesh chunks are 64. Uh, so it's 2 to 6. 2 to 11, 2 to 5, so that's 32 by 32, so that's 1,000 and 3 quarters, 750. So that's about 750 items being sorted every frame. That's not terrible. Um, lock the render requested meshes queue. So that's going to block the worker manager thread while we do all the following work. It's going to hit that code and can't do anything. I can change it to try locking that one. Probably a reasonable thing to do, and I'll just do that. Um, although it, then it won't wake up, but then the renderer will wake it up again. Yeah, he doesn't have anything else to do. It might as well block waiting for that. Okay. Rebuild the queue from scratch based on the current priority order. But emitting entries already have corresponding tasks. Yep. Um, create another direct map. Uh, table for meshes that have their status. Entries that were in the old queue but don't survive to the new queue need to have their chunk sets cleaned up. Do you survive? Need to have the chunk sets copied over. I guess we could instead just rely on the worker manager thread. We'll recompute those from scratch anyway, but maybe that would be less code and efficiency wise probably doesn't really matter. Eh, I'll leave it the way I wrote it. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, I think I've been doing this for a little over an hour, and I'm pretty sleepy. So I think we'll save this for another night to actually tackle implementing all this. Um, but I could probably do it in an hour or two, and then the debugging will start. Um. So yeah, uh, like I said, I'm basically, I'm, since I did most of the work for this on Sunday and it's kind of all in my head, I really didn't want to stop uh, and lose track of what I was doing. So I really wanted to work on it today. And I felt like because people saw uh, the stuff on the stream uh, and we were talking about how it's very likely that this will be a pain to debug, I felt it wouldn't be very fair to 
finish off the threading stuff and not stream it uh or at least not archive it um so i will be trying to stream all of the thread stuff up until it's done and debugged uh and do all the work on the stream up to that point um and i don't know when i'll be doing it but it will all be archived so you can always check out archives anyway so uh so yeah i'm sorry for anyone who just came over from handmade hero that i'm just gonna bail on you but um i've been sleepy the entire time and i've been doing this for an hour and a half now so uh sleepy programming for an hour and a half is probably the the same limit i can't even put words together now so um so yeah sorry if uh if this was your you just arrived but that's how it goes uh we'll pick this up some other day um i already explained all that so uh, uh i feel like i've left something out here um uh, but anyway yeah so uh thanks for watching and i'll stick around and chat for a little bit uh to answer any follow-up questions that remain um and i guess i should just as long as it still runs in this, I'll push it up to GitHub too. Oh, except I just broke the right. I just commented out the uh, the things. Let me uncomment those out and push it up to GitHub. Okay. These are terrible commit message messages. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So, the end of the stream. See you guys.